So, uh, welcome everybody. Um, a little house cleaning stuff, I guess. I'm gonna be locked to this podium for the presentation. Uh, we are bringing some folks in from Corvallis, uh, the Oregon State University campus. Uh, they were unable to make the trip. Um, and they really are kind of the content experts for uh, this presentation. Uh, so I'm gonna kind of act as technical moderator. I'll be trying to figure out how to get in and out of WebEx and screen share and I've been practicing, but uh, uh, forgive me if I click around uh, a little too much. So, uh, without further ado, I guess you all are here to talk about, learn about, and discuss using iPads and iBooks to promote academic success for low-income and first-generation students. So, um, my colleagues and I, and I'm going to bring them up on the screen here. Uh, here we are. There's John and Clint. Uh, they're now active. Uh, so we'll do some introductions, but um, we've had the opportunity to work with uh, the TRIO program. Uh, it's an SSS program, a federally funded program at Oregon State. Um, and we've developed some interesting partnerships that explore technology, uh, digital storytelling, um, media fluency, all these ideas about um, kind of communicating with media elements and all kind of aimed at student success and retention. Uh, so I'm Ed Ostrander. I work with academic technology. My boss is right here in the front row. Uh, <laughs> right, looking right at me. So if my ears turn red or something. Um, uh, I work with academic technology. Um, I've been in and out of IT and media and higher ed for about the past 10 years. Uh, I came to Oregon State from Ohio State University uh, where I uh, pursued kind of a fine arts degree path. And so I'm trying to inject some of that thinking and thought into kind of higher ed IT and, and these ideas about media fluency. So really interested in kind of studio practice and uh, helping students discover new ways of learning through kind of creative process and, and media. Uh, and before I do that, uh, I'm going to kick it over to John and Clint, and let's see if I can get these folks full screen for a second. And okay, you guys are, I think you're here. You'll be a little glitchy, but I think we can all hear you. Go ahead, Clint. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. We're good. Yeah. All right, you sound like a beautiful audience. Um, <laughs> I can't see you. Um, my uh, so yes, I'm Clint Edwards, and I was a counselor and tutor coordinator for the Trio Student Support Services Program for a number of years. I, I no longer work with Trio. I, I work in academics for student athletes. So uh, go Beavers! Uh, but I'm going to talk to you know speak to that program and some of the work that we did uh, a few years ago to get it off the ground. Yeah, and hi everybody, I'm John Dorvolo. I'm Associate Director of Technology across the curriculum. And a big part of what we do is explore emerging technologies for their uses in education. And so this project with using um, uh, <coughs> interactive book authoring was a, was a you know, dead center for, for us uh, to think about. Um, in addition to that, I teach philosophy. I write a column for the uh, school paper called Dr. Tech. I am um, faculty senate president elect and I'm uh, principal investigator of a research agenda that's uh, investigating our new classrooms. And if any, any of you are interested in um, innovative learning spaces, our Learning Innovation Center is something to look at because we have some types of classroom designs that don't exist anywhere else at this point. So I'd love to chat with you about that. Uh, great, thanks John. So I'm gonna bring you all, I'm gonna minimize you. You're gonna go away for a minute as we play our uh, intro video. So we're going to share with you a, a video that was pieced together, kind of a compilation video of the output of student work uh, from uh, one of the courses that we delivered. So I don't know if we can dim lights, but that's okay. So, so long, fellas. We'll see you in a minute. Return. Okay, let's escape out of that. And let's try and bring up this. Whoop. They are, I'm gonna stop sharing because streaming video through the WebEx platform is um, kind of clunky. So we'll just start here. We'll play local. Okay.
Okay. So we wanted to start off with. Um, well, let me let me try and bring uh, John and Clint back in, but. We wanted to share with you kind of the final product that had come out of working with uh, our first gen students. Um, there's a lot of interac interactivity that's uh, possible within the ebook or iBook uh, application. So from the technology standpoint, I'm really excited about uh, the students' opportunity to get out and kind of uh, cohesively bring video elements of their experience together uh, kind of for an academic purpose. Uh, so let's get out of there. I'm going to hop back into WebEx and we're going to bring John and Clint back in. So let's do a screen share. Am I doing this right? Yep. And then we can come here. All right. John and Clint, you still with us? Yeah, we're good. Okay. We're here. Very good. All right. So we just finished the video and talked a little bit about uh, the students' kind of introduction to media in the academic sense, uh, kind of aimed around an academic project or a course project. Uh, and so what we're going to do now, uh, everybody, is talk, I'm going to kind of kick it over to Clint to talk about the TRIO program in general and how we uh, kind of partnered to come up with a project that utilized some of the technology that they were able to acquire through, through the university. Uh, so, I'm going to drive the slideshow, and Clint, you should be being able to see that, uh, and you can share some information. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can. We're good. I, I, I've never presented at a conference this way, uh, <laughs> but this is cool. I can't see anyone, and so it feels less intimidating. Uh, I think you should all try it uh, if you get the chance. Um, so, yeah, I worked with the TRIO Students for Services Program, so those of you that have not heard of it, um, it is a federally funded program, and there is uh, there's a high school, the high school equivalent is um, there's Star Search and um, Upward Bound, and then the undergrad version of the program is called Student Support Services, and, um, and then there's uh, McNair is kind of the entering graduate school part of the program, and so the the, there are three real criteria to be a TRIO student, and so one is to be first generation, so you're first in the family to go to college, um, generally uh, low income based on uh, government guidelines, and then what's considered academic need, and that's kind of a broad spectrum, but you need to at least have two of those contributing factors. And, um, and so when I left uh, graduate school, this was my first job I grad was to work in the TRIO program, and I, and I loved it. It was a great program, great students to work with. Um, and uh, we had, um, we, we were planning to do, we, had, we, we always had a summer bridge program. So this was students coming out of college and going into the summer, um, and uh, or coming out of high school and going into the summer between their high school and college careers. And this is kind of a jump start to get them going. It was you know about a week long. And we started to realize that students would finish this week of, of the program, and then they, they just kind of disappear. We'd get all this camaraderie going, um, and then they were poof, gone. And so we decided to call it, instead of a one-week program, an 11-week program, and include a first-year class, a uh, student success class. And uh, we did that one year, and it was very successful. And we started to realize that a lot of our students had very limited interaction with technology as we were working with them. And that was definitely, I was a first generation student, and the first time I ever touched a smart device was an iPad when I got my first job out of college. Because uh, I went through college with kids and was a low income student, and that was not in the budget. Uh, so they gave me an iPad, and I was like, oh, well, this is cool. And a lot of my students didn't know how to use iPads, or they did, but it was kind of limited knowledge. This was probably 2013, 2012. And, um, and so we're like, well, we should start introducing them to technology. So we wrote a couple of grants, and um, John Dorbolo, at the time, we were all in Waldo Hall, right close to each other. And so John, I would go down the hall and talk to him about how I, my limited understanding of technology, and he became a tech guy. And he would help us kind of uh, figure out how to get these grants and get them moving forward. And eventually, we ended up with a good amount of iPads, uh, iPad minis, and we were trying to figure out how to use them. Um, and so we talked to John about it, and that's where we ended up developing this iPad project. 
um, to do iBooks. Um, and uh, uh, so we integrated into the class, and John introduced me to Ed, um, and uh, and then we start, had the students start to create um, iBooks with the idea of helping them to understand technology and use it, but also be able to kind of tell their own story um, and start to understand where they've been. So the first chapter was what uh, brought them to college and someone that inspired them. And then the second chapter was um, what their plans are while they're in college. And then the next chapter was after college. Um, and it was a, the, the students loved it. They really got it. Um, I learned a lot while we were doing it. Um, and, you know, some of the data came back, you know, 100% of those participants, they, um, you know, having a tablet computer helped their overall performance during the first year, and 80% said that gaining access to a tablet technology made them feel better prepared for life after college. Um, so we felt really good about it, and you guys carried the project after I left. Um, I think that's, did I miss anything, Ed? No, Clint, that's, that's exactly where we're at. And so uh, right now we're looking, we're kind of going to talk about some, uh, of, we're going to talk about that partnership in particular and what uh, John was able to bring to, to the table and what uh, my group at the time, Student Multimedia Services, out of the central IT office was able to, to bring. Because once you start to introduce technology uh, into teaching and learning, uh, you kind of open... A, I don't want to call it a can of worms, but you, you have these um, opportunities to address ideas like infrastructure, how do you support the devices, how do you maintain the devices, um, and so that's where the Student Multimedia Services Group uh, came into play, they kind of helped manage the access um, and some of, the, some of that training uh, on kind of just basic device usage. Um, whereas John's group was able to kind of help build some of that technology curriculum for the course. Um, so John, do you want to talk about your uh, input on, on helping to really develop the course? Yeah, this is a, a, a great project for us because um, all three parts that are necessary to make a project like this go together. And I imagine those of you in the room uh, would, might be in a position to be able to um, front uh, in similar projects, maybe using this technology or different technology. Um, but it's going to follow the similar vector in higher education. You, you have to have a, um, uh, a concept of a, of a use of a technology for an educational goal. You have to be able to present the, the uh, learning objectives and turn it into an assignment. Turn it into the kind of assignment that an instructor would give if they were assigning a paper um, or you know, something to read. They have to understand what they're doing. So, um, you have to be, and, and uh, the majority of our faculty simply don't have the knowledge to be able to do that. So what we're able to do, because we live in both the educational and the technological worlds, um, is to be able to turn technology uh, into assignable projects. Uh, it, it's very similar to a term paper, but in this case, you're going to create an iBook. So uh, how to do that, how to tell people how to do that so that they can go and do it themselves and you don't end up doing it for them. Uh, in addition to that, you have to have the technological infrastructure to make it possible if you're going to go out on the edge with these things. Even if you're going to use the most basic technologies, students, the students, need to have direct support in using them. Otherwise, the support footprint falls upon the instructors, and that they, they will not pick that up. So you have to find that, and that's, that's the part that Ed's going to address, because Ed provided the um, technical, the, the, the tool support, the devices, um, and the knowledge for the students to be able to uh, create what they were trying to create. Um, and then the third critical piece was what Cliff provided for us was the context in which to apply the whole thing. So they had the TRIO program, but they had a first year experience course for those TRIO students. It already had a syllabus, it already had a set of objectives. We were able to take our assignment and plug it into that syllabus. Now we had to work together quite a ways to get it. But once we got it there, we were all comfortable that this fit. From the student's point of view, this was seamless. They didn't see us as, as, as sticking out like a thumb in the course. It was integrated into the course uh, because we wrote the technology piece as an assignment. This assignment went into, and it was a term long assignment. So it was the equivalent of a term paper, but it was a term iBook. 
Yeah. Um, and it was written in chapters as a story. Uh, that means that we spent most of the time that we spent with the students in class talking about creating story and developing idea and, and how to go forward with it. And that's, that's a lot of the stuff we'd like to share, I think, is, is how to move that along. But if you're going to do this, go find yourself a subject matter expert in writing or storytelling or counseling or something like this who can speak to the content part of it, um, uh, and because that's the part that the students need the most help with. They, they get up to speed with the technology pretty quick, and they've got Ed's group to be able to go to to get that a fix. But in the class, you've got to help them develop the idea of what is an audience, and which audience are you aiming towards, um, how are you, how, help them develop it in a, in a teaching strategy. And that's what we accomplished, and we got better at it in the second year, and um, now we've developed this whole thing into a webinar for the entire campus. So we're happy with where it went. So what kind of really spurred all this, uh, this partnership and collaboration was uh, the, our institution, I think, and I've, I've heard other folks say that uh, institutions kind of dole out uh, by proposal kind of a technology innovation grant uh, by request annually. Um, and so I've heard that from a few institutions, and that's, that's kind of what was the impetus that brought our three groups together. Um, Clint's group was able to secure some funds uh, handed down from the kind of the central IT budget authority to develop innovative kind of teaching and learning strategies. Um, and so naturally that fell into existing IT units that were supporting uh, you know, equipment circulation, things like this out of, out of libraries. And then, of course, our tech, uh, John and his technology across the curriculum group to, to, to speak to how to best incorporate those technologies into actual <coughs> teaching and learning. So it became this kind of uh, natural uh, collaboration. We've been in contact ever since. Uh, and John and I continue to work closely together. So, um, uh, and, and as John mentioned, we've so this project, we one ran, thing, go ahead, go ahead, Clint. Yep. Oh yeah, one thing I wanted to add to this as you're talking, Ed, sure. is I don't think we really came at this with one overall plan, uh, <laughs> right. as a lot of things do. We, we knew that the students needed technology, we wanted a way to use it, and we, we understood the, the population well enough that we wanted it to be hands-on and we wanted it, them to be able to kind of learn as they go, um, and they needed to be able to use this in a way that was practical for them. Um, and that was kind of the overarching cloud that we started working with, Umbrella. And then as we started going down that rabbit hole is when we came into you know, finding the technology and being able to structure a program that worked. Yeah, and I remember um, one co conversation early on about what kind of, we, we understood the kind of project we would do in terms of technology and that it would meet um, uh, objectives in introducing students to technology and those students may not have come from a technology rich environment in the first place because these generation students the first in their families to go to higher ed at all um, but in those conversations uh, there was one point where I remember that um, Clint and another um, person in the program said that well, one thing that we hear from these students frequently is a sense of being out of place. They don't feel, they feel like maybe they don't belong here, like they were dropped into place. They're not really understanding how they ended up at OSU. Um, and there's almost a sense of an imposter syndrome in some of their parts, which is kind of amazing when I look at it because they're highly capable, very um, successful individuals. Uh, but they don't have the cultural background, I guess, that brings them forward to it. So it was at that recognition of those students' individual um, um, needs that the idea sprouted that, well, well, why don't we have them first tell their story of how they got here? So if, they, if they're able to construct that story and put it forward to other people that makes sense in a multimedia form, uh, then they would have ownership of that story in a way that's now public and be able to explore that dimension. It, that, that's how that idea started, uh, of how to, you know, to tell the story in three parts. That's right, John. And so uh, at Oregon State, our academic technology group uh, recently uh, was graced with a new director uh, who's, br who's brought some really great ideas, Dr. David Goodrum from uh, Indiana University. And uh, in, in my working with David, he's, he's consistently brought up this phrase, mastering ideas, not keystrokes. 
which I think came from somewhere maybe in the early 90s or something. He, he, he likes to kind of bring that up as his kind of go-to uh, phrase. But this project kind of looks at that idea from both sides of it, right? We are teaching the students how to master keystrokes in one respect, but in doing that, we've created kind of the environment or the projects for them to, to master their, their ideas and communicate uh, through idea by manipulating keystrokes. So um, I don't want to challenge him on that one because I think there is some uh, uptake that is required for students uh, and faculty for that matter in just becoming comfortable with technology and uh, becoming fluent enough to be confident enough to bring it to their students. Um, and so I just wanted to mention that. And, and at, on that note, we're going to hop. We're, we're at about 3 o'clock, I think, uh, mountain time. So we'll, we'll spend the next maybe 10 minutes finishing up the presentation, and then we'll open it up to questions or comments or feedback. Um, John, I'm going to kick it over to you, because we're going to kind of transition into this idea of digital storytelling and kind of how we delivered the class and uh, where, we're, where we currently are with these ideas today with our uh, faculty development uh, program. Thanks, Ed. Yeah. So, um, mm -hmm. and, and Clint, you kick in on any point here because sure. we shared all this sure. together. We'd show up at the class. I think we showed up at the, this class met um, uh, once, twice, a once a week and, and we showed up maybe four times, five times during the 10 week term uh, to give uh, part, you know, uh, 40 minute sessions, I think that we did. And this was kind of a mesh of this digital storytelling and iBooks, but it was also a student success, you know, introduction to college class. Yeah. And so oftentimes we would spend maybe the first hour of the class kind of talking about, um, you know, different resources on campus and um, college level research and different things. And then the second half of the class, we would often start to talk about the iBook project and kind of show how um, digital literacy is going to benefit them in their college career. Right. So a key thing to know here is that we were not teaching the technology. Um, I mean, we we introduced the technology in this case, in this case, the iBook author, um, into their environment and challenged them to use it. None of these students had ever made a digital book before. Uh, only a what two of them that I can think of over the two years had done any video. Uh, and so uh, other than say on a, just on a phone, they'd never done any editing. So it, it was new to them. Um, but you can have students use a new technology or use an exit um, technology in new ways by giving them um, goals and a process uh, of what it is that they're to achieve. And they need to clearly know what they're trying to do. Uh, this is where they get stuck, um, is they, they don't know what it, they, they'll ask you over and over again, what do I want? Um, this is true in writing. Students ask over and over again, what do you want me to say? Because it's not transparent to them. They can write in a technical sense. Um, can they write in an intellectual sense that satisfies the needs of that particular subject matter is, is a different problem. Okay? And, and uh, so the, the technology, in this case, the media, provides advantages that we, I think, that we um, optimize um, in what we did. What we've produced, and I'm not going to go into it in all detail, is uh, for this particular assignment, which was term long, and it was just part of the course offering, um, was uh, we had learning objectives. This is what we expect you to get out of it. Um, we had uh, succinct instructions for what the, they were supposed to accomplish and a timeline on which they were going to do it so that there were things that were due for them. We had uh, little, little lessons that we would give them about different topics that we thought were important in them creating it, uh, both technology-wise, although for the technology, we usually set, did a demonstration or sent them to Ed Shop and said, go find out. So it was up to them to learn to use the technology. And this is great because they taught each other a whole lot. So that, that it was a group project for, for almost all of them. Um, that, uh, really important in this is that we had a means for the instructors to assess it. If you're going to do any technology, and, and we recommend you to do so, but um, it doesn't need to be an iBook. It could be any technology that you can think of if you can find an educational use for it within a term. Um, you have to have a way where the instructor can grade the outcome effectively and comfortably. Um, and 
well, very few, if any, of our instructors are able to grade a video or an iBook. They don't know how to do it. Uh, so what we did instead was we ended with a writing uh, a assignment. They completed their iBook, they turned it in, and then they wrote an essay in which they identified every element that they put into the iBook and the relations between those elements with an explanation as to why they put each element where next to each one. So they had to do an analytic es essay explaining their project in detail. And, you know, a couple of things that came up as we're, as John's talking, that I hadn't thought of for a little while, but one of the challenges of this is when you call it an iBook where you tell them to tell a story, um, the students struggled with the idea of, of thinking outside of simply writing. Which and I, you know, I studied and um, and so that was kind of one of the reasons, you know, the story um, idea worked very well for me. And, and we did the past, present, future. It's a very simple three act structure, um, and students picked up on it very well. But to get them to think of outside of chapters inside of a paper book and start to think of telling their story through a video or telling it through this sort of interactive digital, um, you know, maybe using a Prezi or um, different images. Um, was kind of a challenge and some students just ran with it. Like this just exploded their creativity. And some of them really just turned in words on a page. Um, and it was everything we could do to get them to kind of think outside of that, you know, single dimension. The first assignment, that's right, and the first assignment we gave them was to do words on a page. So we started with writing, something they know how to do, and we asked them to write, how, you, know, why, you know, how did you get to OSU? Just, just tell us the story of the circumstances. And they brought it to class and we had some, some of them read it they were um, really uh, touching some of them, heartbreaking stories, uh, the circumstances of them being there, listening to them, really touching stuff. Um, but but they all wrote something, uh, with the exception of one guy, I remember. But they, everybody else wrote something. There's always that one guy. But everybody else wrote something. <laughs> um, and then what we had them do is take that piece, the actual writing that they did, and said, if you were going to take, they got out a pen, colored pen. If, if you were going to take any part of this and make an audio of it, based on it, not just read it, but based on what would it be? And they would they would circle those parts. And then which would make a video? Circle those parts. And so right, right then, we were putting them to the task of juxtaposing the audio with the text and the video with the text and the image with the text. And they started, and then we would ask them, well, where will you get the audio? And that's where they started to say, well, I, this part is about my, my mother, Who's from Vietnam that doesn't speak much English. So I would go interview her, but well, if she doesn't speak English, well, I'd have to do a, a, a translation for her. And then they started to get it that this was the what the media was about was expanding upon the text. So you have text, image, video, audio, interactivity all in one place, but there's separate elements. And putting those elements together in a meaningful way is what telling the interactive story is all about. And that's, that's what we were doing with them. And, and there's a pedagogical reason to do this, and then I quit. Um, our students struggled more than anything else with seeing relationships between yeah. parts. They can all tell you what the parts of anything are, of math, of English, of science, of, of, of whatever it is. They, they can memorize the pieces and recite them back to you as a list. But you start to ask them about the relationships between the parts, and they start to get pretty fuzzy on that. Then you ask them to take those parts and put them into new relations to create something new, a synthesis, and they get lost really fast. No, no, never make it that far. So in writing, has that element, has that aspect to it, but it's not visible to them. A verb and an adverb and an adjective and a noun don't look different from one another. But in the media, the audio and the video and the image and the text are distinct. You have to select them, you have to place them, you have to, you can move them around and put them in different relations. And you can describe the relations succinctly. Anybody can look at it and describe those relations. So it actually gives us an advantage of having the students construct and assemble ideas out of parts by and creating those parts and putting them into relation with one another. And, and that's a pedagogical advantage that media provides and if we can give them good assignments and good ways to grade those assignments, then we're doing the job of higher education in a stronger way than we sometimes can do with writing or speaking. 
Well, and I know when we finished the project, we were talking to the students and I had them, you know, because the, the big battle that we run into, particularly with a lot of our you know, freshmen is, you know, they're so worried that we're wasting their time. They're so concerned that, that this class isn't going to help them professionally or something like that. And so we had them start to list the skills that they gained from using this, just from working with iBooks. And suddenly they could list, you know, smart technology, they used video, they used image editing, they had used um, different online uh, research techniques that they'd never done. There was just this huge list of um, different skills that they had just, and, you know, they weren't professionals, but they were a little dangerous with them um, by the time they had finished this project. And that, I, you could see a lot of light bulbs turn on. Um, when we finish listing out everything that they had, all the skills they had gained. That's right, gentlemen. And it, it was incredible to see them finally then at the end of the term speak about with pride the work that they had created and to point out why they put specific images on a page in front of their peers to their instructors. Um, and so um, th th it was just great. We were really excited about that. And it, it's, it really is what kind of fueled, uh, it, John and I have been working on this idea of um, this faculty engagement project that um, uh, John is really is leading for our group right now. And um, we're kind of looking back and reflecting on this project. And that's why we're here today is um, we, we're looking back to where we started some of this work. And John's been doing it for a while, but uh, in, in the recent few years, um, we're looking at kind of the wins that we had with incorporating media uh, into, the, into the learning experience. We're, we've moved that into um, some of this faculty engagement work that we're attempting to do. Um, we're, we're trying to wrap, ramp up our webinars and our workshops uh, to reach out to faculty and almost develop kind of a, a media fluency so, sort of curriculum of, of engagement and uh, faculty professional development where we're, we're trying to generate these ideas for faculty to create these assignments in their classes, uh, and to also produce their own instructional material. And so we're kind of wrapping, rolling all that stuff up. John, do you want to talk kind of, I think we've got about five minutes or so, so we can have a little time for folks if, they, if we want to have a discussion. But um, I think we've kind of a four-part series that we're, it's kind of in the hopper right now, uh, that we're thinking about trying to, to share out spring term and then really get going in the fall. Right, so the, um, the, the digital um, uh, literacy and uh, media fluency project that we've got going. So I don't know what we've got similar to some of you. We have about 3,000 teaching faculty here, everything from adjuncts up to you know, full professors. Um, and there's, there's a large portion of those people that uh, stumble around with the technologies, whether in the classroom or at their desk. Um, people could certainly use them better. We don't have any objective of having people use more technology. They could care less about that. But I do want them to use, it, use what they use effectively. Um, so one big goal is, is to get rid of wasted class time, with, you know, people stumbling around. And one of the big uh, obstacles for folks is just knowing the video and audio settings um, on their devices and apps uh, is, is one target. And, and there are several others. So what we're, we've done is put together a, um, a model of a curriculum that would involve uh, modules of uh, media fluency or digital literacy go together um, with one offering about audio video settings. And you know, here's here's the technical part. So here's the here's the inputs and outputs, and, and here's the settings that are in your OS, and here's the settings that are in your app. And you have to understand that you have an app, and you have a device, and you have an OS, and you have to connect all those things together. Um, so they could troubleshoot and set up their pieces, um, and then all the different OSs and combinations have static videos they can go to and and learn about um, their own environment. Um, in, in addition to that, is just understanding some of the um, digit, uh, media basics. Uh, if you're going to show anybody anything, the slides that we have here, you have to understand font sizes and contrasts and so on. So we've got it. So those are really, really basics. Um, then we have a, a, a module, and we're doing these in half-hour sessions, um, webinars or uh, workshops, um, and tell people about how you can make your own instructional media for your class. Um, really, we're using our Cultura, the video system. You could do a screen capture. You could capture your slides or your websites or whatever, narrate them on the fly. Before that, dear professor, 
Please go and create a plan for it. Don't just do it out of the blue, first thing in the morning before you had your coffee. Plan it out. Have a beginning, have an end, have a purpose. Treat it the same way that you would want your students to treat the assignments that they give you. Um, and then you're gonna create a better product. So we teach people about that. And then the, the fourth one in the, in the um, quaternary is um, creating your uh, uh, digital storytelling projects, which can be any kind of media, um, using the model of assignment that we've been presenting here. And it doesn't have to be about iBooks, it could be a video, it could be an audio, it could be any kind of a thing. Um, but we're using the same model that we've been discussing here. So we have other modules that we could add on to this. Our goal is to get all the way through 100% of our faculty, that, that's a goal. Uh, but we can get pretty close if we work with the colleges and certify people with the ability to use media in an effective, if a rudimentary way. Um, but you know, the production values are not as important as the quality of intention that goes into the use. The attention that's, a pe that's paid to, to the form of its application, what it is that you're trying to do. Because we're not really trying to produce prize-winning videos, we're trying to produce videos with meaning. And those can be created at a, at a rudimentary level as long as one understands the limits and plans accordingly. So, that's what Ed and I have been working on and some others. And um, this project that we're doing here is kind of like the fulcrum that pushed us forward into creating that program. That's right. Thanks for joining us, gentlemen. Um, I'm going to bring you full screen, and we have just a few minutes. Um, we, did, we covered a lot, I think. We talked about a, an entire federally funded program. We talked a little bit about a inf, uh, IT infrastructure. Uh, we talked a lot about um, kind of learning theory and media theory. Um, so I'm going to kind of open it up with this last, these last few minutes and bring these folks full screen. They'll probably glitch a little bit, but that's OK. Um, does anybody? Yes, front row. Um, has there been any kind of a connection between the iBooks and being used like in an advising role to help keep the students on track academically as well? So the question was a connection between iBook. Were you, were you able to hear that? Yeah, I think we heard that. The question was, um, can you use this kind of a project in, in, uh, in advising? Right, kind of like uh, to help um, align the student with their goals and keep them on track and such. Can I feel that? Um, <laughs> I, what's, what's, what's your name? My name is Carly. Carly. Carly, nice to meet you. Where are you from, Carly? Uh, Great Falls College, MSU. Awesome. Uh, it's nice to meet you. Nice so the, we didn't describe the whole, all of our parts of our um, project. The second part of our project was this, these were first year, first term students, um, and we had them create a timeline of what their four years of college or five, whatever, would look like They're from beginning to completion. The, the third part was um, a, a a representation of, of what they expected to do with the degree. And that connects with what Cliff was talking about, was they're thinking way out there, but they're not thinking about what they're going to do next term. They're thinking of what they're going to do 10 years from now or something that's funny. Um, so that idea of the timeline, was, and then being able to start to build the timeline, and us to be able to critique the timeline, because these, these guys were their advisors. Um, and so uh, was, was a really usable one. And I think something like that might be meaningful for you. Thank you. Uh, Doug, yes. Yeah. Um, this is Doug McCartney from Portland State. Have, have, hey, you, Doug. have you gotten any statistics together at all to show that this is improving student retention? Uh, you know, what's what's happening there? Do you have any trends yet you can tell us about? So, <clears throat> well, the the research that we do have is from Clint's program um, on evaluating the students' outcomes. Um, and that can be compared to um, other courses of the same type from previous terms that did not use the project. What we did know, I mean, bear in mind, it's been a little while since I worked for TRIO. Um, but when I was there, I mean, the class itself increased retention within the program. 
Um, and I can't, I don't want to throw numbers out because it's been a while since I looked at the data, but I do remember that it did increase retention. And just as far as FaceTime, um, we did see our students much, much more. We also, it was very, these iPads, the students were able to check them out um, term, term by term. And each student that used them and got comfortable with them would check one out every term. They would be the first ones at the door asking to use one because they started to understand the value of it. And they were the ones, and then it became kind of a cyclical relationship because eventually they were the ones teaching us um, what apps they were using and, and different educational um, sources that they could use. So what, one thing, Doug, to speak to your question, I was thinking about that this morning, is we started this project in 2013. And so I, uh, a lot of that cohort who entered this first, I mean, fall term, you know, right off, right off the ground, um, I haven't followed back up with them. But I don't know how, the, uh, you know how they moved through the TRIO program. But that was a question that I had is, you know, can we point to any successes in this experience? That, it was almost a one-off experience. While they had access to the technology throughout, um, can we you know, equate any of their success to this experience? I, I don't have you know, real numbers there, but. Um, I mean, yeah. keep in mind, too, that this is, I don't know how many of you have worked with, in a TRIO program, but um, I mean, statistically, at least when I was there, these, the students, if they qualified, they had a one in four chance of graduating from a four-year institution. Um, and so for us mm -hmm. to be able to instigate this class and watch progression and retention start to go up, um, I don't know if this iBook project, I mean, obviously we don't know if it was the you know, catalyst to watching our the program participants progress, but I can say that them continuing to come in and continuing to use the technology was a very good sign. Thank you. Thank it you. would be um, really powerful to do a a controlled quasi-experimental design where you made the media project kind of look like the, you know, uh, the key factor that you were studying. I, I, this, this, uh, there were a whole bunch of changes that happened in that, those two terms, and the media project was one of them. So it would be hard to pull that needle out of the haystack of the data. Great. We're, we're, we're at 322. Uh, I, I want to keep the conversation going if anyone has questions or comments. Otherwise, John, Clint, thanks. And the folks who, who stayed in the room, I appreciate uh, being able to hang out with you and Helena. Thank you. Yeah, yeah let's just say that um, any of you that are interested in following up, we'd be glad to send you our materials of you know, kind of like how we lay this stuff out and the assignments that we did and all of that. We, we'd share all of that stuff. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Thank you everybody.